Hey, hey, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Bible Time with Natalie. I am super excited you guys decided to tune in and join us. This is episode eight, which is crazy, because when we first started these, I had no idea how many we would actually do, And but I'm loving them, and I hope you are too. This week, we're talking cars. Now, not cars the movie, but cars like you drive. And what does it take to make a car run? Or I'll ask it different. What do you need to make a car run? Right, a car, for a car to run well, it needs to have gas in it. I mean, it also needs some other things, but the thing that we complain about the most is gas prices and we need gas to make our car go. And you know, I've seen some really gorgeous cars. Their paint was nice, the sound was amazing, but you know, if you didn't put gas in them, those cars weren't going anywhere. And of course, thankfully, most car owners are smart enough to know that if you try to put something else besides gas in the car, ain't gonna run. Um, you can even try to uh, mix gas and some, like water or something in it. And it might, it might run for a little bit, but pretty soon, you're gonna be parked on the side of the road having trouble because it won't go anywhere. It wouldn't be very much good at all because that car, it's not designed to run on anything except gas. And, uh, oh, I forgot I brought my car to show you. But no matter how nice that paint looks, that gas, we're not going anywhere. I got to thinking about it and that kind of reminds me of us. You know, people, kids, adults, everybody in between, we're all kind of like cars. We run on whatever we put into our hearts and spiritually. Now we run on what we put into our bodies physically like what we eat, but spiritually whatever we take into our heart is what we run on. And so if it matters what a car puts in it to run well, then it matters what we put in us to run well. Um, the book of Luke actually has a verse about it and I'd like to share that one with you. The good person out of the good treasure of his heart produces good and the evil person out of his evil treasure produces evil for out of the abundance of the heart his mouth speaks. Luke 6 45 ESV. Now Jesus is saying that if a good man from the good treasure in his heart brings forth the good stuff comes out of his heart because he's put good in. He also says that if bad stuff's what's coming out, then you know what they've been putting in is a bunch of bad stuff. Because if you've ever heard, people have talked about how there's a God-shaped hole in us. And you know what we're meant to fill that with? God. But sometimes we try to fill it with music or movies or TV shows or video games or stuff that is sinful and it's not okay. And we put it in and pretty soon all that comes out of our mouth and the things that we do is trash because we're not meant to run like that. I mean, you can, you can go for a ways like that. Yeah. But ultimately it's not going to go well for you. You're going to break down. You know, there's so many people right now that are in chaos and they can't figure out why everything's falling apart and why the world is the way it is. Can I give you a hint? You can't feed on trash and expect good stuff to come out. And people may not like that, and but it's, it's true. You can't consume garbage and evil and expect amazingness and kindness and love to come out of that because that's not where kindness and love come from. You mean you can try to mix it and take a little bit of Jesus and a little bit of sin and put it together. And you know what's going to happen? It's still not going to work. It would just weaken the Jesus part. And excuse me, he don't need nothing weak. Because he ain't a weak God. He is a powerful God. But again, we weren't made to work that way. Just like a car only needs gas to run, right? If we want to live right, we have to have Jesus living on the inside. 
And I hope as this week starts off and you get ready for school, and if you're praying and you're reading your Bible, that you would talk to God and say, God, anything in me that's not like you, get it out. Because I want to be able to run right. See y'all in the next one. Hey, everybody. I love it when you guys stick around. It's so much fun. Today, we actually have something a little bit different. I'm not telling any jokes. I have a question. Bible trivia, if you will. Um, I would ask that if you have, an, uh, have a guess or you know the answer, drop them in the comments because why not? Let's play a little game. But here's the question. Who was the first woman in the Bible to talk to a snake? Drop your answer or your guess in the comments and I'll see you next time. Remember, you are called, chosen, and loved. Peace out.